Hi, I'm Molly from ElvinElysium.com. This is the first in a series of videos that I'm introducing, in part to answer some questions that people from my mailing list and blog have asked about sculpting and polymer clay, and second, I'll be hosting some tutorials and some other fun artist interviews in the coming months. So Brandy, one of my newsletter subscribers, ask what kind of polymer clay is the best kind uh, for beginners? And that's um, kind of a simple question, but also kind of a complex question. There's two factors to really think about when you think about getting polymer clay for a beginner. The first is cost. There are some clays that are more expensive than others. And the second is workability, meaning how easy is it to do what you'd like to do with the clay that you bought. So let's talk about cost. Most of the polymer clay that you're going to find at the Michaels and other similar craft stores are clays like this. There's Sculpey. This comes in the widest variety of colors, the Sculpey 3. There's Fimo, which is a slightly different texture than the Sculpey and comes in fewer colors, but some of the effect colors especially are really interesting. And then there's Primo. It's another Sculpey product. And this is one of the Accents kits, and in fact, this is my very favorite color of clay. It's a beautiful lime green with kind of a little gold metal fleck in it, and I think it's called Bright Green Pearl. You'll see me use it a lot in my projects. So the Sculpey 3 is probably what most people start to sculpt with. Um, a lot of times the Sculpey 3 is pretty soft. This is a pretty old packet, so it's, it's nice and firm. This is a good balance of cost and workability. It's um, at my craft store about $2.39 for a pack. The Fimo is a little more expensive. It's $2.79. It's, um, they have a soft version and this regular version. It's, you can see as I'm pinching it, it's pretty firm. Um, and I just bought this pack because I don't actually use Fimo that often. Um, but this interesting um, kind of pearly translucent color seemed kind of fun to play with. And the Primo Accents. Primo clay is probably my favorite uh, of the colored clays to work with because it does come in a lot of colors, but it's firmer than the Sculpey 3. And if you're going to sculpt a lot of little tiny details, you're going to want a firm clay. If you are going to use something like this push mold, however, you want a really soft clay, one that's very pliable and almost like a putty, because if you take a firm clay and you try to um, push down into this push mold, what you're going to have happen, because it's silicone, it's going to spread out and deform your project. So if you want to use some molds in your project like this one, I would go with a softer clay like the Sculpey 3. If you're going to sculpt little tiny details and other stuff, these are really your best bet. Now, I've long been a fan, excuse my little packet here, I've used part of it, of um, Kato Poly Clay. Uh, this is really hard to find because most craft stores don't carry it, so you generally have to order this online. And it smells a lot like a fresh vinyl shower curtain or a new Barbie, which takes some getting used to. But the Kato Poly Clay um, is very, very firm. In fact, getting this needed enough to use is a task in and of itself. But as I've tested various clays in the oven for whether or not they're going to break apart and how durable they are, this is by far the most durable clay. So if you're going to do a lot of really thin, tiny, flowy details with your clay, learning to work with this is a good bet. It just takes a little bit more work than the other varieties I have here, like the um, Primo and the Sculpey, but it's well worth the effort if you decide to take a little bit more of an advanced approach to your clay, um, especially if you're going to make an art doll or something like that. So let's talk about some of the newer um, inexpensive clays. If you've been to the Michaels lately, you have likely seen this. It's Craft Smart Polymer Clay. And while these Sculpey products are between $2.39 and $2.79 per pack, this is $1.25. And it seems like a really great deal. Um, it's very soft, so it's a good mold clay. Um, and I was very excited when this came out because I just thought about all the money that I could save. Except that it is um, a clay that as you bake it in the oven, I found that the colors dulled a little bit and it got kind of a cloudy white film on it. So I'm not really very excited about this clay. So if cost is the only factor that you need to worry about, this is a good clay to start with. If you really want something that is going to give you a more professional or more beautiful result, I'd probably avoid this one. Sculpey has a new kind of clay called Bake Shop, 
And it's the same people that make the Sculpey 3 and the Sculpey Primo. And the Bake Shop Clay is very similar to um, those products. It is a little cheaper. I think this was $1.79. Um, it's a little similar to this Craftsmart clay in that it gets a little cloudy when it's cured, but it is kind of a good bet for a good balance between cost, which it's more, less expensive, and workability. You can get a pretty respectable product out of this. So the other factor when we look at clays is less about cost if you're a beginner. It's, it's not really that important which of the standard varieties of clay that you use. What is important is its workability. You'll see this is a very old block of clay. Watch as I try to break this off of here. This clay is completely crumbly and completely old. If your clay looks like this, this one is probably beyond repair. If, however, you've got a block of clay, let me find a good one. This is actually probably, we'll use this one. Um, if you've got a block of clay that is firmer than you'd like, you can fix it. You could make it as soft as you really want to make it clear that off. So this was a little crumbly. You can see as I, as I um, break off pieces of it, it gets few, a few crumbs, but it's also pretty pliable. I can squeeze that and deform it pretty well. But if I wanted this to be even more workable to put into something like this mold, this Sculpey clay softener is really what I'm looking for. This is a product that you would probably use about one drop on a piece of clay this big. You get a little drop on there and then you just kind of work it into the clay and you'll see as you get that clay softener mixed in that this clay comes back to life. Our brown pack is probably beyond repair, but this is a great way if you've got clay that's a little old or a little firmer than you'd like to just soften it up a little bit. So if you're molding, this is great. What tends to happen, however, is the opposite problem. If you're going to make little details, like these little polymer clay leaves that I they teach people how to make, and as soon as you kind of start moving on the soft piece, look what happens. It deforms, it won't hold any detail. If you were making a little fairy nose here, if you even tapped it very slightly with a paintbrush, you'd be starting over again. So, if you're going to sculpt in detail, you don't want clay quite as soft as I made this. So one of the things that you can do to rescue clay like that is you can roll this into a ball. And if you have a pasta machine, you can roll out the clay nice and thin. If not, this is a wonderful little tool. It's an acrylic clay roller, and it's in the polymer clay section of pretty much every craft store. So to rescue clay that's too soft, what we want to do is get some of the plasticizer out of it. So roll it into a nice thin sheet like this, I'm peeling it up so you can see. You want it about that thin. And then what you want to do is take a couple pieces of white copy paper and you just want to get the clay on there, get another piece on top, and then you're going to like put a tile on it and weight it down with as many books as you can find to put on there. And in about four hours or so, you're going to come back, and you can already, actually already see it happening. This is so full of plasticizer, it's already made a greasy stain on the paper. I don't know if that's picking up in the video or not. But, yes, it is. It's very greasy. If you, this is called leaching, and what's going to happen is that plasticizer is going to soak into the paper, and then as you start to work with this clay, you'll feel that it's firmer. So it's kind of like a Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Like, this clay is too hard. This clay is too soft. If you leach it or add some plasticizer, you can make it just right. So that, I hope Brandy helps you out in determining what kind of clay is really the best for you to start with and how to handle your clay. If Brandy or any other people have any questions for me, you can leave a comment in the comments field, or you can email me at the email address I've left below or sign up for my newsletter. The links are all in the comment section. And I thank you very much. Have fun crafting.